Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, we, 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 we are looking at Esther and the role she played to save the Jews all over the world. Praise God. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you this morning. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who guides us into all truth. And today, we are receiving the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. We will not walk in a lie, but we will walk in truth as he guides us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, we are in Esther chapter 5. And I was telling you yesterday how the wicked counselors you surround yourself with will be for your downfall. Now, if you are someone in the place of leadership, ask God. This is very serious. Ask God to help you with righteous men around you. I remember several years ago, I read it, I, I think several years ago, I was still back in school then. I read it from John G. Lake. And then he said, he, he, the Lord asked him to pray. And he said, the Lord asked me to ask him for righteous friends. Oh, I picked that up immediately. And it became my prayer point. He said, Lord, help me. Give me righteous friends. Give me righteous friends. Give me righteous friends. Praise God. And, and I can attest to that fact that, oh Lord, the Lord has surrounded me with the right people, good people, good people, righteous people, whose, whose heart is for the Lord. Praise God. I didn't go out looking for, for some reason, for some reason, I just realized that these are my friends. Praise God. Then, then one day, I remember one day, I, I remember that prayer point. I said, whoa. And I share with, we share the same thing with everyone around. Same thing I tell. It's a right prayer point to pray. Lord, surround me with righteous friends. Because you don't want to get to the place of authority and then be found with liars and cheats and wicked people around you. Oh, they will plot your downfall and you will not know when you're falling because they will even tell you. You will be falling. They will be telling you everything is good. The numbers are good. Everybody likes you. Until the last day. That's how wicked people. And let, let me tell you the truth. The moment you leave that place of authority, they go away. They are not your friends. They go away. They were never there to help you stand. They were there to milk the nation because of you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, so Zeresh, his wife, wonderful. His wife and his friends, they were the ones that said to him, and hey, set up a gallow. That guy, this is what to do with him. Set up a gallow to hang him. Then tomorrow morning, go and ask the king for his head. The king will give you now. Now that the king is in good terms and favor with you, anything you ask him, he will give. Now, look at the last, last part of that. It says, And the thing pleased him, and so he had the gallow made. Immediately told them, okay, how do we fix this? How do we get the gallows done? Oh, there's this um, guy I know who can get him calling for me, please. All right, how much? Oh, yeah, fix it. Set this thing up. Is he going to be ready this night? So I'm walking. Hey, hey, is he ready? Now look at what happened next. Chapter 6. And now, now, Haman. And Haman just had this meeting and arrangement with his wife and friends the previous day. And then he had gone ahead to set up the gallows. Now, this morning, the following morning, he was coming to ask, just like he was giving advice. He, just like he was advised, excuse me. Now, look at what happened that same night. That night, the king could not sleep. So, one was commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Big, da Big, Danny, Big Dana and Teresh, two of the king's eunuch, the doorkeepers, who had sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. Then the king said, What honor or dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this? Are you getting the picture? The same night, 
a gallow was being prepared for Mordecai. That same night, the king could not sleep. By the way, Esther hasn't asked the king any request yet. She's just telling him, come and eat food, man. Come and eat my food. Come and eat my food. Praise God. She hadn't made any request. So this dream, this sleepless night, was not induced by any information the king had received in the previous day. This is purely God at work. <laughs> I, I can just tell that at this time, maybe Mordecai was sleeping somewhere, or maybe he was praying somewhere. He wasn't like King Ali to see King Ali. Esther, hey, they had finished their part, they had prayed, and they were waiting on the Lord. Now the Lord began to do his work. The first thing the Lord did, give the king sleepless night. Why? Because. Because the Lord knows, Hayagabasha, in the morning. Okay, let's read this. Hmm. So the king told them to bring, he couldn't, because he couldn't sleep, something was bothering him. What was bothering him? He said, Look, um, get the records of the chronicles. So yeah, start reading them for me. And they were reading, reading. No, next page, next page. Oh, I remember that. Next page. Oh, yeah, next page. And, and, and the, the, the king was almost assassinated, but Mordecai saved him. Read, read that part again. Mordecai, oh yeah, I remember, yeah, I remember. But hold on, what, what has been done to this? I remember until the part that he reported the matter, we investigated it and we hung the men that were responsible. What about the guy Mordecai? What has been done? And, and listen, and the king's servant answered, and the king's servant who attended to him said, Nothing has been done for him. In my heart, I can just see how he answered. I said, King, nothing, no, nothing. Can you imagine? And the king said, What? Someone saved my life, and no reward has been given to him. So the king said, Who's in the courtyard? Now, this was morning time. Hallelujah. Who's in the courtyard? Now, hey man had just entered the outer court of the king's palace to suggest that the king hang Mordecai in the gallow that he had prepared for him. <laughs> oh, oh, Borike Mumbra. I love this part. Are you getting this picture? Oh, Lord, you are God. Why don't men trust you, Lord? <laughs> Nobody is his counselor. Do you understand? He is counselor himself. He is the extraordinary strategist. He, ah, wisdom is him. <laughs> oh, Bali Braga Jacana. Ah, you get in this picture. This guy was just told yesterday build a gallow and hang this guy tomorrow morning. Go ask the king for permission. And then, you know the king will give you. He was too confident. And he didn't say, okay, let's do it next week. The same day, he said, let's fix the gallop. Can we buy it somewhere? No, someone can. Okay, get the person. Fix it. Is it ready? They told him it is ready. Okay. Early morning, he went to the king to ask for that permission. Meanwhile, that same night, the king had determined to honor the same man that he was going to ask the king for his head. Hmm. I, I don't know, how, you see, if you don't respect God with this, you respect him. <laughs> oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> ah. Verse 5. The king's servant said to him, Haman is here standing in the court. And the king said, let him come in. So Haman came in and the king asked him, what shall be done for the man whom the king delights to honor. Now, Haman thought in his heart, whom would the king delight to honor more than me? Now, you, you are you getting this now? This same guy was just boasting at home yesterday that, man, everything is just working out for you. It's just me. I don't know what I did. Oh. The king promoted me. Now, Queen Esther asked for a banquet and said, only me should accompany the king. I don't know. It's like God is setting me up for something. Now this morning again, <laughs> the king comes and says, hey guy, I want to honor somebody. What do you think I should do? 
And he, he thought to himself, who could the king be thinking of honoring? It's me now. It's not me everything is working out for lately. It's me. Maybe the king doesn't know what to do. He wants me to use my mouth to call my own blessing. Hmm. All right. Hmm. And him and answered the king, verse 7. For the man whom the king delights to honor, let a royal robe be brought which the king has worn, and a horse on which the king has ridden, which has a royal crest placed on its head. Then let this robe and horse be delivered to the hand of the one whom the whom the one of the king's most noble princes, <laughs> that he may array the man whom the king delights to honor. Then parade him on horseback through the city square and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. I don't need to explain that. <laughs> Let's go on. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 10. Then the king said to him, Hurry! Take the robe and the horse as you have suggested and do so for... Oh, oh, oh. Uh, no, I didn't hear. Well. I didn't hear right. No, 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 no. I mean, this is heaven now. Take, King says, hurry. Take the robe and the horse as you have suggested and do so for more, more than what? <laughs> no, 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 no. King, no, no, that's not what you're supposed to say. King, you're supposed to say, hey man, take the robe as you have said and call me Prince. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> no, 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 not Mordecai. Mordi what? Huh? Watch this. Hmm. <laughs> ah. Let me read again, verse 10. Then the king said to him, and hurry, take the robe and the horse, as you have suggested, and do so for Mordecai the Jew who sits within the king's gates. Leave nothing undone of all that you have spoken. <laughs> Alright, so Haman took the robe and the horse, arrayed Mordecai and led him on horseback through the city square. I, I can imagine this man's face. I can imagine. Oh, thank you Lord Jesus. Listen, he wasn't there praying against his enemy and praying, Oh God, deal with my... I mean, Mordecai now. Oh God, deal with my enemy. And then, you see, God is humorous. Sometimes, you know, you pray like, Oh God, kill my enemy. Kill my enemy. Let them not see tomorrow. No! It's not sweet. If they die, it's not sweet. Praise God. I'm telling you, David, that's why David said, Thou prepares a table before me. It wasn't... Notice, David wasn't praying. He didn't say, oh God, prepare a table before me in the presence of... No, David was speaking by observation. Ah. You know, the, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to... He was thinking in retrospect. He wasn't confessing. His confession was based on what he has observed. And that's what makes that most times we confess things we don't even know, we don't even mean. Because we're just talking. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down. David was looking backward. He was looking in retrospect. And he was saying, man, the Lord indeed is my shepherd. I do not want. And then he says, you prepare, you prepare a table before me right in the presence of of my enemies. I've seen that happen one and many times. Now that's the same testimony of Mordecai. Are you getting what I'm saying? So quit praying that your enemies should die. Allow God to take care of them. Oh, thank you Lord Jesus. Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king, had, whom the king delights to honor. Verse 12. Afterwards, Mordecai went back to the king's gate. It's not amazing. This Mordecai, I don't know what he saw in that gate. What was pulling him in that gate? Every time that gate break. Now, that was his duty post. That was where the Lord had commanded him to be. So, even after this honor, are you, are you getting something here? Even after this honor, Mordecai didn't say, Man, I've received the highest honor of the land. I'm taking this medal and I'm going to frame it up in my house. And then I'm going to be boasted. I'll change my clothes. I'll change my steps. No, 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 no. 
Thank you for the honor of king. Oh, thank you. Everybody now knows me and everything. Fine. Next morning, duty post. Men like this are rare. But that's the kind of man God wants you to be. Now, you know, there are pastors who will even tell you, ah, you mean after all that honor you received, you still went to stay at the gates? Did they swear for you at these gates? It was in that gate he saved the life of the king. It was in that gate honor came to meet him. His job was not done yet, brothers and sisters. Ah, Marabaya. Our time is up. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>